Oh man, Dave Rubin. Dave is having a, having a rough one, guys. He is having a rough one. So, um, look, nobody was more wrong about the midterms than Dave Rubin. There were a lot of people who were wrong, but nobody was more wrong because he, on like every specific point, was wrong. Okay, so uh, Dave Rubin clips got this here for us. So here were his predictions. Zeldin's going to win. Eh, wrong. Lake, uh, Carrie Lake's going to win. Eh, wrong. Republicans are going to get 54 Senate seats. Eh. Not only did they not get 54 Senate seats, they didn't even win the Senate. Democrats held the Senate. Um, Blake Masters is going to win. Eh, wrong. Tina Forte win. Eh, wrong. Tudor Dixon is going to win. Eh, wrong. Dr. Oz is going to win. Eh, wrong. Um, Luxalt, who was running against uh, Cortez Masto in Nevada, he's going to win. Eh, wrong. The only one he got right was DeSantis one. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. So now I got, oh, I got so many awesome videos for you here. So many of them. So here he is. This is the day before the election. Let's, let's see, uh, see what he's saying here. It is November 7th, Monday, November 7th, 2022. So the Democrats know they're in for an ass a whooping. They know that's it. what they're in they're for, in and there's many reasons for it. We're gonna lay out a whole bunch of them. If you would have turned around when a guy like me three, four, five years ago was screaming about this stuff, you would have a whole bunch of people that were old school liberals still in the Democrat Party, but you don't have them anymore. You don't have them. They have left. The train has left the station. So what do they want now as they realize they're about to get smashed? Now they want a truce. They want forgiveness now. But I don't think we're at forgiveness part yet. Mm. We're at, we got to crush you in the elections tomorrow. Mm. And then you guys have to honestly come crawling back. So Wednesday morning after the red wave, that is what's going to happen. And mainstream media will be running around with election interference and what happened. And do, 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 do. <laughs> do you see it? I'm sorry if you see it because it's you're going, oh shit, I don't want to see it because once I see it, I can't unsee it. But you see it, right? You see it. it like there's obviously something very special about this election. I, I, I wish it was just a regular nonsensical election, but this one is actually special because, because freedom is truly on the docket, right? Mm. Like that's what people- It totally is, but not in the way that he thinks, huh? are really voting for this time. I'm very bullish on something like 54 in terms of the Senate for Republicans. I really am. And Arizona is as purple a state as you can get. I think it's about to go very red because of Blake and Carrie Lake. The people who I think tomorrow are really going to decide the election are going to be the sort of former Dave Rubin types, the, the current Bill Maher types, the, the liberals mugged by reality. The left did not listen to the Dave Rubins of years ago. They did not listen to the Bill Mars. They didn't listen to the Joe Rogans. They didn't listen to any of the people that were going, guys, enough is enough of this. We are not acting liberally. Uh, bro, the woke, the woke has gone too far, bro. Uh, can we fix this thing? Can we turn this thing around? Any of it. They didn't listen to any of it. And they went completely crazy. The choice is yours, right? Like the choice is right now. This is the moment of choosing. That was glorious. All right. Um, let me just keep going through this. You guys are going to love every single second of this. So this is now after the election. Uh-oh, a little bit of a tone change coming. Yes, without question, the massive red wave that so many predicted did not happen. I kept saying all along, while I think it is going to happen. You never know what ha is going to happen, and you cannot. You, of course, did not say that. Not even close to that. Who are you kidding, bro? Who are you kidding? Count your chickens before they hatch. And clearly there was some chickens being counted uh, before they were hatched uh, by the mainstream punditry. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Pennsylvania uh, uh, situation. It was the mainstream punditry was the problem. It, was the ma it wasn't him on his show for weeks leading up to the election. <laughs> No, no, no. It was the mainstream punditry. Jeez. Holy shit, man. So dishonest. Uh, obviously, they, first off, their voting situation is very bizarre. They had a ton of early mail-in ballots. Look, it makes all the sense in the world that Oz would have won, but he didn't. And, and it was, you know, about a five-point differential, which Pennsylvania, man, like, I, I don't know what to tell you. We, maybe we just have to accept that 40%, I mean, I was sort of pulling that number out of thin air, but that X amount of people are always going to vote Democrat no matter what. A certain amount of people are brainwashed. Uh, you know, the other thing that sits behind- So everybody he disagrees with is brainwashed. 
And what he agrees with is, you know, they've seen the light and they're, you know, they've evolved. They've, they've looked at all the evidence and they've made these grand calculations and they realize they're correct. But it's everybody who he disagrees with, like they're just terminally wrong. And what are you going to do? They're just wrong. <laughs> all of this is that this, this young generation now, unless we can red pill them really fast, they're being born in a world where they accept government mandates, where they accept putting masks on. And <laughs> Gover okay, they accept government mandates. What mandates? There, there are no government mandates. Biden had a policy of get vaccinated or test. Then the Supreme Court struck it down. So now there are no mandates. To the extent there are any, it is literally like individual corporations that might tell their employees, you have to do this if you want to work here. That's it. It's got nothing to do with the government. And I love the T kids just accept masks now, bro. First of all, I don't know. Are, is there a single mask mandate left in any state in the country? I don't think so, right? So what are you talking about? And for people to willingly wear masks, that's called freedom. That's called individual choice. I support that. Do you not support that, Dave Rubin? Jesus Christ. When they can go to school and when they can and being online all the time and being given all this stuff. That's not a great uh, indicator of future freedom, right? Uh, uh. You, you know what's not a great indicator of future freedom? When the Republican Supreme Court overthrew Roe versus Wade. You know what's not a great indicator of future freedom? Your buddies over at the Daily Wire, uh, Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro, arguing against gay marriage this week. This week. Jesus. But no, nothing to say about that. He is gay married and he still won't stand up for himself in that scenario. Okay, more. So here we have some of Dave Rubin's greatest hits. Here's his track record with his predictions. 2018, 2020, 2021. Guys, see if you could find a single fucking prediction that's actually correct. So the one way that I think we get out of some of the craziness is the Democrats kind of get crushed, that there is good. I'm not going to call it a red wave. I just, you know, we don't need these. these Democrats won in 2018, by the way, of course. Silly labels on all these things. Um, but I suspect that the Republicans will do better. The, the Democrats, they sort of need to be destroyed in this election. So there's, there's no way they're going to accept the election this time. And I do think Trump's going to win most likely in a landslide. Trump is going to win and he's going to win in a bigger way than he won last. I love this. I mean, it's just every, wrong, wrong. You know, what? the same way I talk about Jim Cramer, whatever financial advice he gives you, just do the opposite and you'll do well in the long run. With Dave Rubin, it's the same with political advice. Whatever his prediction is, take the opposite prediction and you'll be right in the long run. Sounds crazy, but Trump's going to get 30% of the black vote and they know it and that's why they're freaking out. I tweeted about a year ago that, tr that Trump's going to get 30% of the black vote. That's an insane, no one that's in their right insane. mind would say that. Support was 15%. 15%. 70% approval. Yeah, I'm guessing it could it could be around 30%. Yeah. I think that that 30% is going to break very hard to Trump. That's not going to show up in the polls okay. because they, they won't say it in the All polls. Right. But even bigger than that, you're getting Donald Trump elected because the average person is finally, for at least as long as the rest of us can be on Twitter and everywhere else, the average person is able to see the truth. And look, if it's me and Scott Bayo and Larry Elder versus Gavin Newsom, Barack Obama and Kamala Harris, I like our chances. I really do. So bring it, guys. And, and please, if you live in California, please vote. We know there is going to be fraud. We absolutely know. So is it crazy to think that it might be a possibility that come election night, if they're counting ballots and it's kind of looking close and Larry maybe is winning, do you think it might be possible that they're going to be like, oh, you know, we can't call this election or just the general California machine, which who's tabulating these votes? It's the entire machine, the entire system here. So, of course, he was all in on the recall of Gavin Newsom and uh, Larry Elder got crushed in that race. Following a disappointing midterm, a defeated Dave Rubin questions election integrity. OK, this is great. So you're going to see a video here before the election. He's like, Republicans are going to do so great, bro, that the Democrats are going to come out and be like, bro, maybe there was fraud in this election. The election integrity is in question, bro. Like that's we only lost because the the. The elections were sort of rigged and stuff, bro. So he's he argues Democrats are going to make that argument after a red wave. You already know what's going to happen. It's like we need to secure elections. This Dropbox stuff, this early voting stuff, this bundling stuff, and then deciding suddenly that, no, we'll find out maybe tomorrow. Eh, actually, it's going to be three days. Oh, it's six days later. Now we'll announce. It's, it's the worst feeling in the world. 
when you vote and you don't feel like it counted or you feel like they just drop box it at the end or late voting or you're waiting three days. So it's, it's like these people want they either want fraud in the system or they want the appearance of fraud so that you just feel like you have no power. Even if it's all legit, as I keep saying, even if even if there was no fraud within that whatsoever, although I think the more time that goes on from the, when people cast their vote to when it's announced, there you, you're giving room for fraud. But even if there's no fraud, the idea that you wait six days and that all these things can happen, it puts the idea in people's mind that it's fraudulent. Uh, Lewin says, will Carrie Lake fight the fraud? Look, it's hard to know what the hell happened in Arizona. It almost felt like it was like destined to go this crazy way, right? Because Carrie Lake was, was the politician in this entire cycle who was talking about voter fraud more than anyone else. She was backing Trump on fraud claims more than anybody else. And then it turns out that her state, which they had been doing work to make sure it was going to be better this time around, that they turn out to be the ones that it takes seven days to count the votes. So what's the next thing that they have to do right in front of our face? And this one, you really, really got to pay attention to. They are now, because they know they're about to get crushed, they are going to be the ones questioning election integrity. Suddenly, you know what's going to happen on Wednesday? You're going to be allowed to talk about election interference again. You're going to be allowed and encouraged, actually, to promote that there was fraud in the election and everything else. So Wednesday morning after the red wave, that is what's going to happen. And mainstream media will be running around with election interference and what happened and do 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 do. <laughs> so he did the exact thing that he accused the Democrats of of doing. He said the Democrats are going to start questioning it because there's going to be a red wave, and there wasn't a red wave. There was a red trickle, and so now he's questioning election integrity. By the way, just so everybody understands, there's the scenario called the red mirage, which now happens in our election. Here's what that means: Donald Trump really ingrained it in the heads of Republican voters. Don't vote by mail. It's fraudulent. It's sketchy. It's questionable. You have to vote on election day. He said that over and over. You know what? They listened. So now, overwhelmingly, mail-in ballots skew in a pro-democratic direction, 70%, 80% sometimes. So they count the votes that come in on election day first. First. And so that means it looks like, oh my God, the Republicans took a big lead because all the Republicans are voting on election day. And as soon as you start counting the mail-ins, the opposite happens and Democrats make up the difference and win. They, they get more than the Republicans. Ultimately, they look at them and they go, oh my God, that's so sketchy. That's so questionable. No, it's not. It's what you guys wanted. The other thing is a lot of, a lot of these places want to do like hand counts of, of the results. Okay. Well, that takes a while. And so if you want the hand count, which I understand, I understand people wanting a hand count. That makes sense. Right. But it is going to take a while then. So you have to accept that. You can't call for it and then be upset when the logical result of the thing you called for happens. All right, more. I suppose it will still be an issue because are we going to codify it? Are there going to be some states that outlaw it altogether? Are we, going to, are we going to start seeing busloads of young, poor black women from Alabama going to California for abortions where they get an abortion and a cookie from Gavin Newsom? I suspect over time the optics of that are not going to look that good. Uh, but I would also say that it's, it's very unfortunate that abortion is such a big issue for everybody because uh, it's, it's a personal and private decision, obviously, for the most part. And then there's the issue of where the state has to protect life. But also there's so many, I don't want to say more important things, but there are so many functions that the government really should be focused on all the time, like, you know, keeping you safe and the border and police and things of that nature and making sure the economy is chugging along, that abortion just becomes one of these culture war things that envelopes the whole thing and, and it's messy. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it will so, still hey, be an issue because, because of the, the Republican position on abortion hurt the Republicans. Man, it's a shame that this is like such an issue, bro. Hold on. You cloak yourself as the guy who I'm fighting on the front lines for freedom. And then now an issue involving freedom is front and center in politics. And you're like, I don't I don't like that this issue is front and center, bro. But I thought you were the. So wait, when the pro freedom direction cuts pro Republican, then you're like, this is all that matters. But when the pro freedom position cuts in a democratic direction, it's like, don't ignore the freedom. Pfft, who freedom, bro? What does that even mean, bro? Do we even really know what freedom means, bro? I don't even know about this freedom thing, bro. Oh boy. All right, I got one more for you. One more. Okay. A wounded Dave Rubin grapples with Gen Z being overwhelmingly left. Quote, we give all these kids awards, whether they come first or last. Oh, my God. This is like the ultimate boomer rant. 
They're confused about what hard work is. They're confused about what individual rights are. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Hit us. M says, why do you think so many Gen Zers are turning into leftists, even though some of their parents are conservative? Because youth is wasted on the young. Uh, it's as simple yeah, as like, that. Get off my lawn. And fucking kids. Fucking kids with your Zima and your Pokemon and your hula hoops and your Macarena. Get off my lawn. <laughs> but it's a very complex question. Why? Like the answer is complex. Why are young people more left? Well, I mean, one of the reasons is they're pro-freedom on social issues. They want gay marriage to be legal. They want abortion to be legal. They want marijuana to be legal. And it's the Democratic side that is fighting for that. So that's one reason. Another reason is this economy is fucking predatory. And these kids see through it. They know. They, you know, they're, they're, they're living it. Loaded up to their eyeballs and student loan debt, you know? And hey, would you look at that? It was a Democratic president who at least tried to help them on that front. Maybe these things. Maybe this is uh, one of the reasons why, you know? Maybe those $1,400 checks that the Biden administration cut, maybe that materially helped some of these people in their lives. And so they're going, okay, look, I'll, I'll reward you. Could you just help me? Young people think that things are supposed to be a certain way. And because they think it, they think it should be, and it should be forever. And they don't realize in America, we have grown. Wait, but everybody thinks that, right? Everybody thinks there's a way things should be. That's not unique to young people or unique to the left. That's what you, Dave, that's what you do for a living, Dave. When you talk about the way you think sh things should be. God, this guy is too dumb to be in this position. It should be, and it should be forever. And they don't realize in America, we have grown up, if you're growing up in the last 40 years in America, the success and wealth and privilege that you that have in simple. America, we have grown up, if you're growing up in the last 40 years in America, the success and wealth and privilege that you have as a free person in a free society. And it was very easy to give away. And then we give all these kids. Okay, that's unbelievable. We're in the heart of the neoliberal era where wages have been stagnant since the 1980s. And he's acting like, bro, everything's so great. You should appreciate it. All of their awards, whether they come in first or they come in last, and they're confused about what actual pride and hard work is. They're confused about what individual rights are. And they, they think that the machine is designed to just take care of them. And actually the machine is designed to control them and, and the culture and the movies and all the <laughs> stuff. And that's why we just got to keep building new things. M bro, says, why do you think so many Gen Z are and the things and stuff, bro? So basically, young people are wrong on everything because they don't agree with me. Look, you guys know one of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody is doesn't even bother to try to get into the mind of their opposition, right? Like steel man people you don't agree with. He never he never would do that ever. And on top of that, he literally has the worst prediction record in the fucking country. Okay, and there's another video. I wish it was here, but I, you know, I take me forever to find it. But Dave Rubin talking about how, pff, bro, there's never any accountability in political commentary. These fucking schmucks in mainstream media are wrong about everything, and they get promoted. On that point, he's right, right? But he's wrong about everything too, and there's never any accountability, ever, ever. He never comes out like, you know, I was wrong about this, 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 and this, and here's why I was wrong, and I better reevaluate, and never, ever. He just goes out there and acts like he wasn't wrong about some shit. Look, I've been wrong about stuff. I'd have had to put my tail between my legs and come out here and say, oops, I was wrong. Good example is when, um, remember when one of my episodes with Joe Rogan got banned by Spotify? And then I went back and it, it appeared to me one of the biggest clips from that um, episode was me criticizing Saudi Arabia, like very viciously. And Saudi Arabia had just invested in Spotify. So I said, holy shit, it looks like they pulled that episode because of my harsh criticism of Saudi Arabia. Well, it turns out, somebody brought to my attention, that's actually not true. In the podcast, what happened was, uh, Joe Rogan said N-I-G-G-A. He was quoting Kanye, and he said that, and this was at the same time that he, Joe was under attack because of that compilation video of him saying the N-word. And so Spotify removed it because of that. So as soon as I learned I was wrong, I came out the next episode, I was like, 
look, I see where I was coming from and thinking it was the Saudi thing, because it's a weird coincidence that Saudi just invested in them at the same time they pulled that, but it's certainly because of this N-word thing that it got pulled. It's okay to be wrong, just come out and admit it, it's fine. But he can't, and he won't, because of his pride, and when you're wrong about fucking everything, at some point he's just admitting, like, nobody should be listening to me, and he would never do that, ever. Ever. Anyway, there you have it. Dave Rubin visibly struggling with, uh, coping with, number one, his wrongness, and number two, the fact that young people don't agree with him. So he's all in get-off-my-lawn mode, and that's all he's got. All right, guys, that's the show. I love you to death. Hey, do me a big favor. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to a million subs, um, and it's going to be a long, hard climb, but, you know, we're getting there, slowly but surely moving in the right direction. If everybody who watched this show subscribed, we'd already be there. So hook a brother up. Also, leave a comment, leave a like, click that notification bell so that you know every time a new video drops. Um, much, much love and a big shout out to everybody who keeps this show going by donating on Patreon, uh, people who are members on Substack for Crystal Kyle and Friends. Remember, if you pay $5 a month, you get the uh, video of all the Crystal Kyle and Friends episodes and you get it a day early. Everybody else, it's okay. If you don't pay the five bucks, you can still listen for free on all the podcast outlets. It's just it's just the audio as opposed to the video. The people who pay five bucks get the video and get it a day early. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you, man. Also, listen, if you want to listen to this show in podcast form, it's on all the various uh, podcasting outlets as well. Um, so definitely check that out if you prefer that to YouTube. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I love you all very much. I'll talk to you soon. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Peace. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.